I'm Joshua Bardwell, and I wear glasses. There are many advantages to wearing glasses. One of them is that if I want a moment to think in the middle of a conversation, I can take my glasses off and just pretend to clean them, think for a while. If I want to indicate that I'm deep in thought, I can chew on them. Interesting. And if I want to reveal to my new girlfriend that I am in fact Superman, but one of the things glasses are not good for is FPV because the goggles that many of us use, they don't fit on your face when you're wearing glasses. And that's why the product that I'm gonna be looking at today is so exciting. This is the FXT Viper. It's a new FPV goggle from FXT and it fits right over your glasses. I have no idea how this shot is framed so I hope you can see what's going on here. It fits right over your glasses and that's pretty exciting. But how is it as an FPV goggle? Even if you don't wear glasses, maybe it's a darn good FPV goggle. That's what we're gonna find out. Stay tuned. Before we get into this video, I need to make a few acknowledgements. And the first acknowledgement I'm gonna make is, yes, I know that this isn't the only FPV goggle in the whole world that you can wear over your glasses, but I have tried other kinds of box goggles, the Yashin box goggles, for example, and a lot of times, yeah, they kind of fit over your glasses, but they're really squeezing on your face and they're pressing on your on your temples and it's it requires some modification. They all often don't work great. The other acknowledgement that has to be made is that, yeah, I know you can get custom diopter inserts for your regular fat shark goggles, if that's what you're into, and in fact, I, I use RHO Lens, which is a company that takes your optical prescription, makes a custom insert for the Fat Sharks, no matter what your prescription is. I like them so much, I actually have a coupon code. I'll put it down in the video description if you want to get those for this kind of Fat Shark goggles. But not everybody likes that. Not everybody wants to use that kind of goggle. Some people prefer box goggles. I don't know what's wrong with you guys, but hey, I know you're out there and this video is for you. If you do prefer box goggles, this is pretty exciting because as you could kind of see, it has this kind of silicone rubber, whatever it is, probably silicone, uh, sunshade that protects, keeps the sun out, right? But it doesn't actually rest on your face. It actually rests on this headband here and that is where the weight is. So if we just, you can see, it's not pressing on my face. And as I push this down over, actually the way, to, the way to put it on over your glasses is actually to put it on your face like this and then pull the headband over so it's not awkwardly pressing on your glasses, right? And now that you've done that, you can see that this actually isn't pressing on my face at all. It's keeping the sun out and it does a decently good job of preventing light leak. The number one place that there's a little bit of light leak is here at the nose. But honestly, I, I, having flown with these, it's not too bad. Now the core of this goggle is actually a screen and the screen, as you can see, just comes right out here and it's powered by USB plug and that actually goes via a nice little, they've got some clips here which keep it nice and neat and it goes back here to the back of the headband where the battery mounts and I'm just gonna pull that off here. It comes with all of this, by the way, it comes with the adapters and it also comes with an adapter, an XT60 adapter, so if you want to power it with one of your standard batteries, uh, you can. And it takes up to uh, 26 volts, I think it is, so I think it will work up to a 6S battery, although I'm not sure I would try that, but if you've got any spare 3S or 4S, you could use the same packs you fly your quad with, just use the XT60 adapter and plug it into one of these. Now the screen is controlled by this joystick in the back, and there's also a button right here for uh, starting and stopping the DVR. Uh, I'll turn the screen on by holding down the joystick. You see this light lights up and then the screen turns on. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to show you what I'm doing with the joystick, but I wanna take you on a walk through the interface. It's, it's reasonably well designed. Uh, the first thing that you'll see is that there's an on-screen display here at the top, which shows the signal strength for the two antennas, the channel that you're currently on, the frequency that you're currently on, the on time, and the voltage of the battery. Uh, so you can, you can monitor your voltage. If I press the joystick once to the right, I get this screen, which lets me select a frequency. Uh, one thing that kind of bugged me about this was that it doesn't show the channel numbers 
I, I realize that it's, you know, it's probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we figured that out. But if you're looking for race eight or something, you have to think a tiny bit about the position that you're that you're on here. Uh, so I would like to see a numbers indicating one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight here. Although uh, you guys in the comments are going to point out, it's it's relatively easy to see what's what. One thing some reviewers have noted is that a couple of these channel numbers are repeated, and I think that's going to be on the E band specifically. Yeah, like 5905 is repeated three times here, but some people have questioned whether that's a bug. It's not a bug. They've done it on purpose, and they've done it because some of these frequencies are not legal to use in the U.S., so they're not including them in the receiver. And this is a big deal because the FCC has been cracking down and finding. They find get FPV, $180,000. They find get FPV, well, they're trying to find get uh, Hobby King, like $2 million. Although it's only video transmitters that have this issue. Video transmitters are not allowed to transmit on these illegal frequencies. Receivers can receive. So I guess it's nice that they're trying to obey the law, but at the same time, there's no reason they couldn't have included those frequencies if they wanted to. If I push the joystick to the left one time, I get this screen, which lets me step through my favorites. And you can store eight favorites, one, two, three, four, five. There's only five stored at the moment. So if this channel order here seems kind of random, that's because we're setting the favorites. And if I push the joystick and hold it to the left, I get this screen, which lets me pick my favorites. So you can go through and you can say, for example, I'm gonna pick race one and race three and race five. And, and then if I click left one time, then I can step through these. I think I didn't select race band, but anyway, you get the point. You can have presets and set them. If I hold the joystick down, we go into auto search mode and it scans all the channels and it finds the one that it thinks is the strongest. This, uh, this screen suffers from the same deficit that I noted in my review of the Omi Commander, and it's also true of the EV200, although I'm not sure I remember to mention it, which is, it's not as easy to see what the possible frequencies are that you could end up on. So there are many frequencies that are really close together, you know, like race three and fat chart four, and I don't know, I don't have the frequency chart in front of me, but there are many frequencies that are kind of close together. And I find that auto search doesn't always end up on exactly the right one, especially if you're very close to the device and the signal strength is very high for all the channels. So here we've ended up on channel E1, but in fact, I know I'm not on E band, I'm on race band. So if I manually put this over in race band, yeah, there's the menu. So here we are in the menu and I can go race band one, two. Huh, that's actually, it must be race two, huh? Yeah, it's race two as though it actually is, not E1. So auto search put me on the wrong channel. And that's not gonna matter when you're real close, but it is gonna matter the further away you are, the more it matters that you're on exactly the right channel. Now, it is nice that unlike the Omni Commander and the EV200, we do have an RSSI readout here that allows us to kind of get a sense of, of how the signal strength is and get us a better sense of whether we're on the right channel or not. But it would be really nice to have a spectrum display where it scans through all the channels and shows you where the peak in the in the signal is and help you make a better decision about what channel you need to be on. A small complaint, because most of the time you're gonna know I wanna be on race one, race three, race five, and getting there is pretty easy. There's any number of ways to get there. Now, this comes from the factory. Now this screen does have a speaker as you can tell, and it comes from the factory with the speaker turned on. And the first thing most of us are gonna do is we're gonna go into the menu, and we're gonna turn that speaker off, because that's freaking annoying, and you don't wanna hear that. But if you do, if you do have a quad with a microphone on it, you can hear the motors, and that's kinda of nice. Your friends can hear the motors too, unless you use an earpiece. AV out, oh, yeah, you're probably gonna wanna use an earpiece, so. There you go. As far as the screen goes, you can see right here that we've got almost the entire screen on the display. That's very good. It's a very basic thing that you would hope everybody gets right, but not everybody does. We can see the left and the right side of the OSD. We're losing a tiny bit off the top, but overall, very good. As long as we've got the screen out here, it is important for me to show you that 
you're not actually looking directly at the screen. The screen is really close to your eyes in a lot of these goggles, and you're basically just looking at a screen that's three inches from your eyes or whatever. They've actually got a mirror in here, and it's used to increase the focal distance so it feels like you're looking at something a little bigger and a little further away. The other thing that I want to show you with these is that the sunshade here actually pops off. You just pull like that, and what that does is and lets you use it well of course it doesn't block the sun out as well it's right here but you do have a little bit better ability to to like see spectators bystanders dog walkers and so ooh, i can see how i'm framing the camera too you can have a little bit more peripheral vision and of course on a sunny day you're going to get a little bit of washout on the screen but it's really totally your choice which way you want to go with that so what's the final word then should you buy this goggle i think if you're a glasses wearer then this is a pretty compelling product. Uh, it's one of the, it's the only one I can think of that fits on your face exactly like, well, the DJI Goggles RE, which that's like a $600 product. That's in a whole other ballpark. So it's, it's 159 bucks for the Viper and it works better with glasses than any other goggle I've tried. If you're not a glasses wearer, then well, you're gonna to wanna to look at something like, for, well, the EV800D comes to mind from Ishin. It's got the same resolution as the Viper. It's got diversity, it's got a DVR, and it's only 100 bucks, so it's like 60 bucks cheaper. It fits straight on your face, though, so maybe you don't like that. Hmm, I don't know, you'll decide. The Fat Shark Transformer, that's a lot tougher. It's running 189 bucks. The screen is a lot nicer, but it doesn't have built-in diversity. It doesn't have a DVR. So you really got to want that binocular viewer or the panel viewer. You really got to, like, for example, the binocular viewer for the, for the Transformer does have adjustable IPD. That's something. So if you're a glasses wearer, it, if you have a prescription less than minus six, it can go on your face and it can just adjust. So that's worth pointing out. But at a price of 189 bucks, you're certainly paying a premium to get that Fat Shark product. So... There you go. That is the FXT Viper. It is a little bit of a specialty product, but for the kind of people who it's going to appeal to, it's not bad. I've been flying with it for a little bit. Yeah. Is it going to convert me to box goggles? No, but it's not bad. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Stay, uh, happy flying. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. What? Thanks for happy. Who are you going to stay tuned? Stay tuned for the next video. Hey, go watch another one of my videos. YouTube loves long session times. Happy flying.